What's up guys? So literally the day after I posted my video about showing you how to um, extract broken bolts, um, it was a 30 minute long video, a lot of information. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have uh, oxygen acetylene torch here at the house, but today, the day after I post that video, um, I'm at work and I had to extract a broken bolt out of a crankshaft. So, and I, luckily I had a torch and I needed it. I'm going to show you that video now. Do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and this is going to be a quick, short uh, video showing you an example of that. So this uh, Z915 came in with a broken clutch, as you can see there, and here's the broken bolt, the retainer bolt that goes up into the crankshaft. The rest of the bolt is still up in the crankshaft, broken off pretty uh, rough and gnarly in there, looking like quite a mess. So we're going to have to extract that bolt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, this, this bolt is a 7 16 Just like that set I showed in the other video, I'm going to use my quarter inch drill. But first I need to grab my snap-on center punch and put a, a punch right in the very center of that broken off bolt. And this is going to take great care. Don't get in a rush. Make sure you get right in the center of that bolt and put a good center punch in it. Now once I have that initial indention made, I can increase it by knocking it in a few more times. And again, the, the extractor that you choose is based on the size of the stud that you're drilling out or the bolt. And the extractor that you choose, the size extractor, is going to determine which size drill bit you need. And in this case, it's a 7 16 stud, which calls for a quarter inch drill bit. And so I'm going to drill out this hole, and I'm going to stop frequently to make sure that I'm staying in center. And I'm going to stop and clean it out, clean this debris out, and also cool down the drill bit and the stud. I'm going to use some compressed air here to clean it all out. This gives me a good opportunity to inspect how I'm drilling. I'm going to go ahead and throw some WD-40 in there. That'll help keep everything cool. Now I know this camera angle looks like that I'm off center of that bolt, but I'm pretty dead center on it. But the camera angle is a little deceptive. So I'm going to use some compressed air, keep everything clean. I'm just trying to my best to stay precisely in the middle of this bolt. Now that I have the hole drilled uh, in the middle and as deep as I need it to be, I'm going to go ahead and drive my extractor bit into the stud. Now I'm going to put a pair of vice grip pliers on here and just see if I get lucky enough and let that to see if this is, bolt is going to come right out. And as you can see, I'm rotating the crankshaft of the engine. It's turning on me, so I'm just hoping I would get lucky just being able to hold that pulley and apply pressure. And it just I wasn't lucky enough. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to keep that engine crank from turning while I apply enough torque to remove that bolt. So what I did was I put a pair of vice grips here. I clamped down to that belt right there on that belt guide. And that pretty much secured the engine from turning. And so now I'm going to try my best. I'm, I'm, I'm putting enough torque on this extractor to where I'm in fear of breaking off the extractor into that bolt, and you do not want that to happen. I'm going to apply some WD-40, kind of let that soak in, 
And at this point, I realize I need to break out the torch and I'm gonna heat up that crankshaft to try to expand and contract. And I'm gonna leave that pulley on there, that crankshaft, dry, the drive belt pulley. I'm pretty much gonna be using that as a heat sink. So I'm gonna crank off this, uh, start off this acetylene torch, get it to a neutral flame here. And then I'm gonna apply heat equally as I can to this crankshaft. Now, if I ruin this crankshaft, I've pretty much, you know, it's gonna pretty much be the cost of a, a new motor. After parts and labor, to replace that crankshaft it's going to be pretty expensive so i got to use great care here um, this is only to be done by professionals with plenty of experience using a settling torch i'm heating up this crankshaft equally here and again i'm using that drive belt pulley as a heat sink to absorb some of that heat so it doesn't destroy that rubber seal that's right above uh, that, that pulley there. So now that I've applied the pressure, now I'm, I'm using compressed air to cool it off relatively quickly, but not too rapidly to cause any warping or distortion. And as you can see, I have a little bit of moisture coming out through our compressor which that only kind of helps in this situation. I'm just trying to quickly cool off that crankshaft that I just heated up. So now that I got that crankshaft relatively cooled off, it's still hot to the touch, I'm gonna take a piece of ice to rapidly cool down this end of this crankshaft. And what this is going to do is I've, I've, I've expanded and now I'm contracting the force between those female and male threads of that bolt. Use my compressed air. Feels pretty cold now. Just breaking up that rust and corrosion between those threads. And now I'm going to take this pipe wrench and right away I can tell everything worked. Guys, I've been doing this for a long time. It's very satisfying every time it works. That thing would not move at all before applying that heat. I applied that, that heat, got that crankshaft almost red hot in some spots, and then cooled it off and now I'm gonna apply these vice grips because I can tell at this point it's time to uh, take it all the way out. Now, when it gets into a bind, you'll see that I kind of rock it back and forth. Don't just sit there and go in one direction. If it starts getting tight, kind of go back into the tightening, tighten, loosen, and then pull it on out. And guys, this is, this is a job that Took me probably about 30 minutes to do, and I could charge a couple of hundred dollars for doing this job. I just saved this customer thousands of dollars. Threads are perfectly intact, can perfect, perfectly remove that broken off bolt out of that crankshaft. Worked perfectly using that crank pulley as a heat sink. Threads are perfectly intact. And right here, you can see how important it is to get that center punch right in the middle and that get that drill bit right in the middle of that broken off stud. Now, I can all already tell, I'm gonna see some comments that, hey, he probably ruined the integrity of that crankshaft. I'm gonna show you right now um, that I did not. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen up this drive belt. I'm gonna slip that drive belt pulley right off that crankshaft. If it's swollen or distorted, it's not gonna come off easily. And you can see how easy it just came right off. 
Uh, one mistake that I did make when I sprayed my WD-40, I didn't even make it inside of that top surface there. I need to make sure I shoot it a little bit higher next time. So what I'm going to recommend doing is applying some anti-seize to this crankshaft. So I'm going to brush on some anti-seize onto this crankshaft. That's going to help keep this thing from seizing up in the future. Future mechanic, which will probably most likely be me, will thank myself for doing that. So now I'm going to slip that pulley right back on, show you how easy it is. Now, if you ever have one of these off, you'll see, you'll notice here, I'm trying to show you how it says this side faces the clutch because there is a right side and wrong side. You can do that and you'll see how well it slips on so that crankshaft has not been distorted or damaged by me using that uh, torch to heat it up. Everything is in good condition. Having the right tools for the job makes all the difference in the world. If you ever have to break, if you ever break off the, one of these extractors into that bolt, you might have to get one of these burr sets. This set was about $600. You don't want to have to do that, guys. All right, guys, so um, it takes a lot of practice. Uh, you kind of have an acetylene torch. You got to understand, um, you know, heating up that metal, heat sinks, things like that. I've been doing this for over 20 years. Um, I actually have more welding and, and metal fabrication experience than I do actual mechanics experience. But as I did my um, had my welding business and fabrication business, turning wrenches and taking things apart was always part of that. Uh, job so you know just use got to use extreme caution know what you're doing um, take your time be patient it's all in the preparation okay so do me a favor hit that like button hit the subscribe button I'm gonna have more videos like this going into very deep detail hopefully to help you guys out on these critical repair jobs all right I'm gonna do another video on tapping and, and um, you know threads and all that the beautiful thing about metal working with metal and welding and stuff like that is that you can kind of you know there's just so many times where you can completely mess up and, and you can fix it by adding and subtracting metal you can tap threads drill holes weld stuff up um, it's a beautiful thing when you know how to do that stuff so uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll have more videos like this com coming soon. Thanks for watching. See you next time, guys.